said it's a beautiful day for a ride. I thought I'd go out and, and do a little review on Yoshi. And yeah, I got a bunch of stuff to do in the yard today. Gotta pick up leaves and clean the swimming pool. Stuff like that. So Yoshi is, uh, gosh, year and a half old. I bought her in April 2015. About a year and a half, roughly. Not splitting hairs here or anything, but it's been an awesome bike. I've tried to ride her in many different conditions. Uh, you name it. Taking her out to Big Bend Desert. Uh, done camping with her. I have raced her in a cross country race. A lot of trail riding. And some street riding. So I definitely would say that this is not a one sided review. I've uh, definitely ridden this bike in most every condition. Pushed it really hard. Burned out a clutch, the blown fork seals. Yeah. I broke shit, definitely. I think this is probably a pretty fair review for you guys out there. Guys and gals, I guess, whatever. People might be interested in the WR250R. Currently running a new set of tires on this. Uh, I had a set of brick stones on, brick stone tires when they when I bought this bike and uh, then I went through two sets of Dunlop 606 tires which very popular tire for this bike. Um, when I initially got on the Dunlop so they worked out really good because I was doing mostly trail riding. I wasn't doing a lot of street stuff really. And uh, they're pretty knobby for the streets. They are DOT and certified and all that stuff, but you know, for the most part, I, um, I don't know. Didn't do much of that street riding like I am now. And since then, I bought a race bike. So I'm racing a KTM 250XDF. So anyway, Currently, I'm running a Shinkos, which are crazy inexpensive, and I like that because I'm a cheap-ass bastard. Um, but beyond just saving money, they seem to be a really good tire. They're definitely more of a true 50-50 tire. And uh, see, we're gonna go down here. This is my little neighborhood. Um, anyway, they're more of a 50-50 tire, tread-wise, knobby-wise, and uh, nice tire. Um, it's got good traction. Haven't done a lot on the dirt with them, so I can't really say a whole lot about that, but I could definitely say good things about the Dunlops, although my second pair, the knobby started cracking before they wore down much, so I don't know what that's all about. Then you got your tree here, which is just perfect for jumping over. Oh yeah, Yoshi like to do that. I'm gonna go ahead and do a little walk around here and we will uh, start, I guess, on the top and kind of talk about what kind of mods I've done here on Yoshi, my WR250R, that's 2015 model. Um, 
I guess first we'll start with the handlebars, which are the uh, Pastrama uh, Pro Taper handlebars. I had to get the uh, fat mounts. I used the OEM ones. You can see them kind of right in there. Um, I just use OEM. Probably some better ones, but they've worked just great. Uh, I had to order those from some shop in Michigan, but um, again, I'm going to have links for everything that I'm going to talk about in the description below, so you can kind of check that out. Uh, Cycra handguards, uh, definitely been great. I've beat the heck out of them, and uh, they've held up just fine. Uh, been good handguards. I uh, also put Cycra handguards on my um, KTM 250 XCF. Um, I liked them so much on this bike. So um, I've got the lights are um, 12 o'clock labs. Yep, uh, 12 o'clock lab lights, tail lights, and blinkers. And um, let's see, Pro Taper uh, grips as well, pillow grips. Uh, put those on there. Double take mirrors. These are really good. I like the double take mirrors quite a bit. Um, they definitely bend when you fall and haven't broke. I've been really hard on them. Uh, and uh, yeah, they've held up really well. So uh, I do have a RAM mount for my iPhone uh, for when I want to get some directions and stuff like that. Um, don't use it a ton, but guess I'm going to be using it more now that I'm doing more dual sport riding. Um, I also have, uh, hard to see here, let's see. I got fork bleeder screws right there, if you can see that. Um, those are really important, or at least they have been for me, because um, you can quick release the air out of them. I have load this up in the truck, or I used to a lot to go dirt bike riding and um, torque it down with straps. It's really great having these bleeders. Um, I'm not quite sure if torquing it down too much in the truck or mud caused the fork seals to get ruined. So I have had the fork seals redone once and um, added seal savers uh there's shock socks and some other brands but uh i use the seal savers on these and um got those just because i don't want to have to redo the fork seals more than absolutely necessary so um i've gotten this bike really really muddy really dirty covered literally and um Whatever it was, the too much pressure from loading it in the truck or the fork seals uh, getting mud in them, I've had to have those redone. So that kind of sucks, and I don't want to do that again. So um, you'll notice the graphics are not factory; those are Moto Cal graphics. That's M O T O C A L, and that's a pretty cool group. Um, I really like that website a lot. You can actually uh, kind of use their design tool and trick those out, which is really, really cool. So I um, also got this uh, forest radiator guard and not just to protect the radiator because the stock one is really total crap, but um, it has a brace that goes around the fan unit as well. And I crashed hard a couple times and literally ripped the fan right off the spindle. And I didn't notice till I was out trail riding one day and my bike was overheating and took it apart. And um, that was a, over a hundred bucks, I think, out of the dealership, 125 bucks or something to get a new fan. Uh, they're pretty cheap plastic fans. And to get that um, put on was, uh, sucks you know if you don't want to lose a hundred dollar fan because they're kind of cheap definitely get the radiator guard that's a really important mod i think right out of the gate um 
one of the first things I'd probably do that and the skid plate so uh, kind of moving on down that's the moose skid plate and you can see I've drilled some holes in it all the way down underneath and uh, when I got it and put it on I was getting a lot of vibration so I went ahead and drilled some extra holes and I ran a uh, piece of foam tape you can see right here under the end which kind of kept the vibration uh, kept it from vibrating and uh, yeah it really was making a lot of noise when I first put it on so um, got extra wide aluminum foot pegs I forget what the brand is again it'll be in the description uh, nothing fancy uh, I like the fast way pegs but I didn't really want to spend that much money on them and these have proven to be really uh, solid good uh, good for me um, the uh, pipe got the FMF power bomb a lot of people choose that for this bike and the Q4 FMF slip-on pipe so that's a uh, pretty uh, pretty important mod I would say it's up there one of the exhaust system airbox mods skid plate radiator guard those are absolute must mods in my opinion um, I just if you want more performance and save your engine um, they're just really critical. You can see down here, there's a huge dent in this. This is solid aluminum, serious skid plate. Uh, at the whole aluminum versus plastic. Well, you can see it's dented in there a good half inch probably. And um, that would have definitely ruined my crankcase. So um, skid plate I think is really, really important mod to have. Again, uh, the uh, 12 o'clock labs lights, um, which have been real good. I've uh, actually uh, broke a couple in crashes, and I got a spare set. So it's really easy to wire one up pretty quick if uh, you do break one. Um, let's see here. Tire-wise, talked a little about that earlier in the video. I've mostly run Dunlop 606, but this is the uh, Shinko 5050, and you can see it's got pretty nice tread. These are so crazy and expensive. I'm excited to try them. I'll walk over here and show you this one too. It's got some pretty good tread, and uh, I really like how they feel on the street. And uh, they've been pretty good off-road too as well. Haven't done a ton of off-road on them yet, but um, what I have done is um, it's been great. So airbox mods, again, I'm not going to take the seat off to talk about all these airbox mods. Um, there's the ASI, I forget the exactly all the stuff. There's tons of videos on that and uh, some units that come off here, uh, lots of stuff. Tape open the airbox flap. Um, there's some other stuff on the side of the block that's got to come off all California admission stuff and uh, really noticed a huge difference on the uh, performance of the bike when I did those mods so um, I did have everything off that was extra weight so buddy pegs uh, I use those to strap on my giant loop which is the, it's the heat guard for it bag system for camping and uh, but when I was trail riding I found they kind of got in the way so I kept them off um, but they're back on now because this is officially my uh, dual sport bike so we're just going to be doing dual sport riding with this so I've got some things back on here that uh, used to not have when I was trail riding just to kind of keep the weight down and everything so uh, Zeta chain guard um, the plastic one just as well as the front sprocket guard was plastic I had so much debris catch up in there uh, it was hard to lube the chain and I wasn't ever sure if there was a lot of mud packed in these two things so 
I switched to these open ones. I really like them a lot. Um, this is from Zeta and this is from Sandman Parts and we're, uh, we've got links down below. You can uh, check those out as well. Um, driven shifter, yeah, I screwed that up. Um, the original stock shifter, so I put a driven shifter on. You can see how much the uh, aluminum wears down though. So uh, you'll definitely get a mark on your boot with these aluminum ones and um, whatever. I mean, it's a good shifter. It's been very uh, dependable, hasn't bent or anything. And other than kind of screwing up your leather boots a little bit, um, that's, uh, that's about the only negative I got with that. So anyways, uh, I did take off the kickstand sensor basically keeps it from starting when the kickstand's down. I just found that to be a nuisance so uh, I took it off. Something I really didn't feel like I needed on here. Pretty much always check what gear it's in before I start it up anyway. So um, rear sprocket. I've got the aluminum uh, 43 tooth on it. I rode a 50 tooth on it for a long time. It makes a huge difference, the 50 tooth. Um, really does give you a lot of torque out of the hole. And, uh, but it really kills the top end. And for the street, um, that kind of sucks. So now that I'm not trail riding it anymore, I've got uh, the uh, 43 back on here. That is not factory. That's a blue anodized aluminum one. So it cuts out on the weight a little bit. Uh, Renthal chain. Uh, I switched out when I switched out the sprocket and uh, that's been a pretty good chain. No complaints with that. Uh, let's see what else. Well, we got the uh, we got the Zeta gas cap, which not only do I like the look of it being billet aluminum, but um, you don't have to use the key uh, on this sucker, which I really like that a lot. Um, and uh, the reason I didn't get it right away is I didn't know they made one with these little tabs here uh, that actually fit the metal tank. I thought I had to get a new tank, um, but you don't actually. If you just want to get the keep the stock tank and uh, upgrade the gas cap, Zeta's got a solution for that. So adds a little blue bling as well, which is always kind of cool when you're trying to bling out the bike. Uh, I do have a extra fender. The stock fender is blue. And I do have an, the extra blue fender with holes drilled in it for the uh, billet, pro billet rack that I have for the back part. So um, that's not on right now. I usually just have that on for when I'm camping or needing it to haul stuff around. So I did burn out the clutch doing some crazy hill climbs and I did switch that out too. I put a Barnett clutch in it, replaced the springs with heavier springs and um, both metal plates and fiber pads. So um, I haven't had any trouble with this clutch since I put it in. Uh, I am heavy on the clutch. I feather the clutch an awful lot. So um, I definitely need a clutch with some good uh, good pads on it and good springs. So anyway, switch the clutch out on this guy as well. Oh, I forgot the seat. I know I'm probably forgetting some other stuff. <laughs> I'll go ahead and point that out. I did do the sergeant seat and um, that was one of the most recent mods I've done because uh, I didn't want to switch the seat out. I was doing so much trail riding. I didn't want a wide seat, but this thing's awesome. You can see how it flares out right here. And so if you shift your weight back just a little bit on this thing, um, it makes for a really, really um, comfortable ride. So uh, I went ahead and sprung the bucks to get that. I tried the seat concept seat and I liked it, but it just seemed really, really firm to me. And I figured if I'm going to spend several hundred dollars on a seat, 
I might as well spend a little bit more and get one that's uh, perfect for my rear. So this one's got pretty good cushion, uh, pretty comfortable, not too soft, but soft enough. And that really wide stance on the back is pretty awesome too. So anyway, yeah, like I said, I'm probably forgetting some stuff I did, but that's the bulk of it. I think those are the real critical mods that uh, you ought to consider. Um, tried and tested. This is a great bike, all around bike. I mean, if you don't want a bike, you don't care if your bike goes over 80 miles an hour. I think this will actually go, uh, depending on your wind and everything, 80 to 90 miles an hour. Uh, plenty fast for me for the kind of dual sport riding I do. Um, this is a great bike. Um, light in most regards compared to other dual sports. Uh, really fun to ride, bulletproof. This thing, it's really tough for this uh, solid engine, really tough to screw it up. Um, great gas mileage, uh, looks freaking cool like a dirt bike. And um, yeah, it's just all in all been a, just an awesome bike. Super highly recommend them. Um, as dual sports, lightweight dual sports go, they don't get much better than this, so uh, for the money. You'll have to go up to a KTM or a Husqvarna dual sport to do something better. So uh, there you have it. There's Yoshi. That's my uh, year and a half review mods update. And uh, thanks for watching the video. Uh, ride hard, have fun and be safe.